Hi, I'm Alex Paul with Open Systems Media and Embedded Computing Design, and I'm here with Oliver Block with uh, Microsoft Azure, and uh, well, we're all talking about the Internet of Things, LoRa, right, Oliver? Definitely, as always, right? It's a great topic. I mean, the energy here is all because it's so new, and yep. it's growing so fast. They're making it up as they go along. We're creating all the rules, we're creating all the technology. It's an ongoing, real-time process. It is. It's super interesting to see how it evolves. I've been in that space, first the embedded space, you know, prior to my life at Microsoft. It's been like 20 years that I've been evolving in the embedded space. And I've seen how devices became smart, became connected, uh, and, and we, we're seeing the pendulum between like all the data needs to be in the cloud and then the device and so on. And, and people are finding solutions to many types of problems, right? LoRa brings a solution for a certain type of problems around connectivity, long range, low battery consumption. Um, all of that brings a lot of complexity, right? And we had this fantastic speech by Johan and Vinke uh, yesterday during their keynotes explaining that lots of projects are failing at proof of concept. And they're there to simplify the way devices get connected through LoRa for these specific scenarios. And I love that speech because we're doing the same one, explaining from the cloud provider perspective the fact that there's complexity in implementing analytics, visualization, taking action on the insights that are extracted from devices' data. Uh, all of that is complex. So we're bringing simplicity in the cloud with solutions like Azure IoT Central or IoT Plug and Play to allow the various players of that world to connect, to integrate, and for the users, the final customers, to have a seamless integration that is robust, that scales, and that really serves their problems and solutions. Well, you know, Oliver, one of the things that I find very interesting about that, and you're addressing it with the complexity, is right now there's a big movement and thought about where the balance is between the cloud and edge computing. You know, the hardware and the software, the wireless and the physical world, as it were. What's your take on that whole aspect of the balance? Because obviously it's going to be different for everyone. Yeah, I was about to say that my, my answer to that is it depends. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. Here's what you need. If you want to implement a solution, you need to look at exactly what is the problem you want to solve and then look at the solutions and use the one that is best fit to your problem. Distributing the intelligence in certain scenarios is necessary because you are not always connected or you have policies that prevent you from, have, from being able to share your data with a public cloud. Um, but the power of the cloud is something you want because you want to train models that will allow you to extract the real insights from the data you're producing from your sensors. So you need to have a platform that makes it easy and simple to distribute that intelligence when it's needed. You want to bring an AI workload as close as possible to the device? That's something that you should be able to do very easily. Train the model, deploy the model, have it available at the edge on a gateway or something, right? And I don't see that, that notion of intelligent edge, intelligent cloud as being either or. It's something that's going to be about distribution about management of that distribution of that intelligence. But if you think about it, you know, we talked about smart devices 10, 15 years ago. Smart devices, devices with an OS that were able to run several pieces of software in parallel. That was already Intelligent Edge. And you had to think about how do I put my code down there? And I need to have a platform, a middleware, something to deploy. And so the problem is not new but you need to have the tools, the platforms, for you to focus on the added value, which is creating the algorithms, implementing the solutions, but not spend and waste your time on implementing the platform. So you need to have partners like we are and hope we are um, to, to provide these platforms. Uh, we need to have the things network communities to create these common ways of implementing these solutions so that these platforms appear and, and are used by customers. And so that's, that's definitely our mantra and the way we're working. Simplifying IoT, delivering platforms that simplify IoT. And I was telling you just before, there's that quote from Albert Einstein I really love, which is about everything needs to be made simple, or actually everything needs to be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. So it we can't be too simple. It, it cannot be too simple because it needs to solve a real problem for customers. And it also needs to be customizable because the answer to how do I do that it was, will, will always be it depends on what you need and how you want to do that. There's no one generic way to do things. 
And so we definitely need to have flexible platforms that remove the complexity and offer a flexible solution. Excellent point. Now, are there any application spaces that you've uncovered that you realize offer a tremendous opportunity to expand into, to leverage yeah. IoT, LoRaWAN? I think, I think there's an interesting space that uh, we as, as a cloud platform are looking into, which is how can we help solve the problem of the uh, you know, huge amount of solution that exists in the devices world for connecting, for protocol, for communication protocols, uh, for describing devices models. Um, so we just recently um, created that technology which is in preview now in, on Azure, which is called uh, IoT Plug and Play. And it's based on an open source definition language called the Digital Twin Definition Language. And we, we open source that because we want to work with the ecosystem, with the industries, at, at better defining how we can build a platform that allows device manufacturers declare the capabilities of their devices for app builders to leverage these capability models and integrate devices easily into their solutions. So the final solution is something like, I want to add a device. It's going to be a LoRa device, and it's going to be of that type. And oh, there's a catalog. Oh, all these vendors have it. Click, deploys into my application, and device connects. I have a, a, a token that has been exchanged, a really secure provisioning, and it happens. And device starts talking to my application. Data appears, I can do analytics. I don't have to code anything on the back end because I don't know what a device is. But having an interface which could be standardized you know, across the various verticals that works with different platforms from different solution providers is definitely something we think is key for simplification of that integration of the devices into the world of cloud or applications. So that's one of the areas I would really want to have the community look into, help us define what's the best way to define what devices are in the IoT space. Excellent, Oliver. Now, uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time or else we could talk on this topic for a long Forever. time. <laughs> but is there something you wanted to leave our audience with before I let you go, you know, chase you off the stage? Uh, we, we definitely want to engage with developers and the community in the IoT space, right? I've been in that space, some people know me. Uh, we have a blog which is on aka.ms slash IoT blog, uh, which is around a community of developers. Uh, so join that community, uh, come and, and read our blogs, uh, find me on Twitter, find my colleagues on Twitter as well, and uh, we'll be happy to you know, chat with you, learn from you, and try and make the best platform for IoT development. Well, it is all about community, isn't it? It is, definitely. Well, look where we are. That's about a community. That's the way LoRa is progressing. And by us participating and contributing to such a community, not only do we want to be like a better citizens in that community, but we want to make progress, learn. You know, how does that work? You know, and, and that's the way you get better. That's the way you create better products and we we'll make business together as well. Very cool. Oliver, thank you so much for taking the time to be here at this really busy show. It was really Thanks fun. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.